in nature, there is order and harmony only when creatures and things are in their right relationships with each other. That's one relation up, and there's disorder. So is it with humans. A human's proper position with regards to God is as a creature submissive before the Creator. To behave otherwise is the source of all the problems we have in this life. Thus, salvation is a restoring of the proper relationship between God and man. As an example, consider the story of the prodigal son in the Old Testament. The son and the father started out as such, but the son refused to acknowledge their proper relationship and went off and did his own thing thus bringing trouble down on his head. Their reconciliation is a restoration of their proper relationship. With respect to having a relationship, we must have an anchor, a point of reference that is absolute and never changes. This point is God. God could find no better name for himself than I am. Just as a sailor calculates his bearings based on the sun, so should we base our moral bearings on God. Hence, we have problems when we don't take God as being absolute, but try and seek to make him more like us. God can't change, so such efforts will be futile, and likely damaging too. Hence, our proper relationship with God, the Creator and Lord of all, is as a holy, submissive preacher and servant. When we make God our focus and anger, we necessarily break with the world. Sure, there are a lot of people that say that Jesus is their Lord, but for many of them, there's truly something else that takes place above God. That something else might be money, other people, ambition, the self, human love. But if it's not God, placing it first just invites disaster and ruin. However, the man that makes God his aim will find that the Holy Spirit helps guide him to God. Some might feel unease at having to give themselves completely over to God. Well, remember that we are in disgrace because we dare to usurp God's rightful place on His throne. Also, we have to be a servant to someone. Better to be a servant to God than a slave to sin. God says in 1 Samuel 2.30, But I honor those who honor me. Eli and his sons did not honor God, and disaster befell them. On the other hand, Abraham, Joshua, David, and other Old Testament saints honored God. And because of that, God honored them despite their imperfections. Jesus himself honored his Father at all times, while the Pharisees didn't. In fact, Jesus mentions this clearly in John 5:44. No wonder you can't believe, for you gladly honor each other, but you don't care about the honor that comes from the one who alone is God. So, might it be possible that the root of all unbelief is lack of honor for God? All this said, we must be careful and sure that our hearts and minds are going forward together in this. A man cannot effectively honor God if he is split in will. That said, if one truly honors God, God will honor him in return and place his treasures into his hands, knowing that they are safe.